Today's video will demonstrate how the shortest path algorithm works with a graph. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. One of the most useful and powerful algorithms of the graph data structure is the shortest path algorithm. This shows us the path of edges from one vertex to another. This video will demonstrate how the algorithm works. There are two ways to find the path between a source and a sink vertex. Um, the first is the depth first method. Here, I will take one path and continue all the way until it dead ends. And then when it fails, I'll backtrack to the last decision point, in this case, A, and I will take it all the way until it ends. And then I'll backtrack to the last decision point, which is E, and then that was a dead end. And then I'll take back to E again, and that'll find me the solution. Now, this will find the solution, but it's difficult to backtrack and it's difficult to know which of the many paths is the shortest one. The next one is a breadth first search. And this had the added benefit of, first of all, not having to backtrack. And second, it's guaranteed to find not only a path, but the shortest path all the way to the destination. There's an interesting story about this. It's been long known to be valuable to know the shortest path between two vertices. But no one really knew the best way to do this. So a professor at the University of New York um, gave it as an assignment to his students, not knowing the answer. And one of the students found the answer after a couple days, and his name is Dijkstra. And so we call this the Dijkstra algorithm. So here I'm going to start at A, and then I'm going to find everything that A connects to. And this will be all of, of length 1. And then I'll take all the elements that A found, which is B and D, and I'll go one spot from there, and this will be of length 2. And then I'll take everything that those two found, which is C, E, and G, and that'll be length three. And then finally, I will find everything that that found, which is H, and that'll be length four, and that is the shortest path. So let's take a look at our algorithm. So I want to have, I have a source and a sink as my two vertices that I have to go between. And the first one, I'm going to say my distance is zero. And then I'm going to say the distances to all the paths that I know about right now are going to start off as negative one, which means unknown. And while the queue of elements that I've yet to visit is not empty, and while the sink, in other words, the guy I'm trying to find, um, has an unknown distance, I'm going to continue looping. So first of all, I'm going to take the vertex I'm currently considering off the front of my queue and pop it off. And then I'm going to increment my index only if it's greater than the index that I have not yet visited. Now I'm going to take every single edge connected to that particular node and I'm going to assign a distance to it, um, remember who my predecessor vert vertex was, and push it to the queue of things I have yet to visit. Now I'm going to continue going through this while loop until I've either um, I have no more nodes to visit or I found the distance to my destination. Now notice if my destination is negative one, that means I've not I don't there is no path and I return an error. Otherwise, I'm going to push back going from my predecessor link backwards onto my list of my possible nodes. So let's say for an example, I want to find the path between node B and node D. So I'll start with find path and I'll say my distance is zero. And then I'm going to push back my source, which is B, and I'm going to mark all my distances as negative one. Now, while I have not yet found the answer, I'm going to take my to visit off the front of my queue, which is B, and that's my node I'm currently considering. I'll call this vertex. And then I'm going to get all the nodes it connects to, and B connects to both A and F. And initially, I'm going to be looking at from B to A. So I'm going to mark the guys red. I'll put my graph on top. And then I'm going to say, okay, for A, um, the distance is 0 plus 1. And then my predecessor is B, the person, the vertex from whom I came. And I got to remember to look from A onto my Q. And next is F. And the distance for F is now 1, just like A. And my predecessor is also B, just like A's was. And then I'm going to push F onto the back of my Q as well. All right, now that I found every possible node from B, now I'm going to go and pop A off the front. And now A is my vertex I'm considering. And um, I'm going to increment my distance by 1. So now everything from A is 1 plus 1. And notice how the only node that A is connected to is F. And F, we already know the distance to. So I skip that one. And now I'm going to go back and pop F off the front. Now F's a node I'm going to consider. And F has only one node that it refers to, which is going to be my D node. And let's see here. My distance to D 
is two, which is my current distance plus one. And my predecessor is F, and that's my vertex from which I came. And I'm gonna add D onto my two visit queue. Now notice how I know the distance to my destination. So I can stop now and I can just pop the elements off. So um, I start with D, then F and then B. And so my path is B, F, D. And that's my shortest distance from B to D. Okay, let's take a look at a more complicated example here. I wanna find the, the shortest path from vertex zero to vertex six. So I'm gonna start with my vertex, the distance to vertex zero is zero because it's myself. And then I'm gonna pop that one off my queue. So that's my two visit is zero. And let's see here, um, zero can go to one. And uh, so my, my current distance plus one is one. And my predecessor is zero, the person from whom I came. And I got to remember to push one onto my two visit queue. And then I can visit two and two, the distance is one, just like the distance from one was. And my predecessor is also zero. And I'm going to push two onto my queue. And now um, I can also visit four and four, the distance is likewise one. My predecessor is also zero. And I'm going to push four onto my queue. Now I've explored every option from zero, so I'm gonna be done with zero, and I'm gonna look at the next guy on my queue, which is one. Well, one can only go one spot, it can go to three, and so I'm gonna say my distance is now two because one's distance was one, and I'm gonna add one onto it, and my predecessor was one because that's my the front of my queue, and I'm gonna add three onto my queue because that's the one I just visited. All right, now one is finished, so I'm gonna uh, pop it off my queue. Now I'm gonna be considering two, and two can visit only four. So, but four has already been visited. So I'm gonna pop two off my queue, and now four is the front of my queue. And where can four visit? Well, it can visit zero, but zero has already been visited. Um, let's see here, it could visit five, and five has not been visited. So the distance is the distance to four, which is one plus one is two. And it's my predecessor is four, okay? And let's see here. Now I got to push five on my two visit queue. Let's see here, who else can four visit? Mm, it can visit seven. And so the distance is also four's distance, which is one plus one is two. And I came from four, which is my predecessor. And I got to push seven onto my two visit queue. All right, next one is three. Three is ahead of my queue. Um, let's see here, who can three visit? Well, I can visit six. Six hasn't been visited yet. So I'm gonna take three's distance, which is two, add one to it, which is three. My predecessor is vertex three. Now that I found the distance to six, um, then I can find the path. And the path is gonna start with six because that's my sink. And let's see here, six's predecessor is three. So I'm gonna add three onto my list. Three's predecessor is one. I'm gonna add one onto my list. And one's predecessor is zero, which happens to be my source. Therefore, my shortest path is zero, one, three, and six. Okay, let's take a look at another example. I wanna find the shortest path from seven to three. Okay, so seven is my source. So therefore my distance to seven is zero. And I'm gonna push it on my two visit, which is seven. And let's see here, who can seven visit? Seven can visit node two. Okay, so two, um, the distance is my current distance, which is zero plus one is one. And my predecessor is my current node, which is the head of the queue, which is seven. So I'm gonna say that's seven. And I'm gonna add two onto my two visit queue. All right, I visited every one that seven has access to. So now I'm gonna pop seven off my queue and now two is at the head. Who can two visit? Well, only four. And so the distance to two is one. And therefore the distance to four is two. My predecessor is two and I got to push four onto my two visit queue. All right, I guess we're done with two now. Let's go to four. Now four can visit many ones. It can visit zero and zero has not yet been visited. So I take four's distance and I'm gonna add onto it um, one, which is three. My predecessor is four and I'm gonna put zero onto my queue. Let's see here, who else can four visit? Four can visit five. Uh, five has not been visited yet. Okay, so five is my current distance, which is two, plus one is three. My predecessor is four. I'm gonna add five onto my two visit queue. And let's see here, four can visit seven and seven's already been visited, so we're done. All right, now I pop four off my queue and I'm going back to node zero. Zero can visit one and one has not been visited yet, so cool. Um, so I take my current distance and zero's distance is three and I add one is four. And my predecessor is node zero, of course. I'm gonna add one to my queue. 
And um, I can visit four, but four has been visited. I can visit two, two has been visited. So I guess zero is done. So I'm gonna pop it off. And now five is at the front of my two visit queue. Hmm. Five can visit four, but that's been visited. It has a known distance. Um, six, um, six does not have a, a distance. Cool, so let's do that. So five's distance is three. Therefore, six distances is three plus one is four. And my predecessor is, of course, five. And I want to push it onto the back of my queue. All right. And five can also visit seven, but seven has been visited. So I'll pop five off my queue, which means one is the front of my queue. And one can only visit one element, and that's three. Three has not yet been visited. So one's distance is four. Therefore, three's distance will be five. And my predecessor, of course, is node one. And now that I found a distance to three, which is my sink, I can then pop them off the queue. So I'm going to put three on there first because it's my sink. And let's see here. Three's predecessor was one, so one is on there. And one's predecessor was zero. And zero's predecessor was four. And four's predecessor was two. And two's predecessor was seven. Therefore, my shortest path from seven to three is seven, two, four, zero, one, and three. You can learn more about the graph, including the find path algorithm, in the graph chapter of the C++ Data Structures textbook.